Okay, this is a uh, brief overview of the Kodu Game Lab, which is a uh, video game design platform for students, and it's visual in nature. So let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to go in and select uh, New World. and it brings me to a blank world that I can basically create from scratch and this is what allows students to be very very creative uh, I'm gonna start by adding some more land or what we refer to as a terrain so that our character can actually walk around and we'll have some space to work uh, code is pretty cool in that I can choose different color terrains uh, to actually put in my simulation or in my game as well. So you can see here I've got the pink polka dot thing going on. Okay. And um, I can also do some pretty interesting things here like uh, create uh, hills. Okay. And I can make them disappear. I can. I have a smooth tool here that allow me to make uh, smooth out my hills a little bit. This is a spiky or hilly, what they call tool to make spikes. I can even uh, add water to my simulation. Okay, so if I wanted to engulf my uh, terrain in water, okay. So Kodu really allows the students to be very creative, such as writing. And this is what I mean by um, when, I, when I'm trying to say that I'm trying to um, combine coding and English and language arts uh, and see how the two correlate. Because students can actually create a fantasy world here and then uh, actually program it to do specific things. So I'm going to spin my terrain around here real quick. Now we're going to get to the part where we can actually start programming. So once the students visually create the world, they can then add um, programmable characters into the world. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to introduce a character, uh, Kodu. Okay, and there's Kodu there. Okay, there he is. Use the pan tool, move around here. Okay, there's our character. And then what we're able to do is program Kodu to do certain things. So I'm going to right click on him, go to program, and this is the programming interface for Kodu, and it's based on when do. So basically saying, when this happens, do this. Okay, and students can actually visually program this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to program Kodu so that when I press certain keys on the keyboards, he'll move. So I'm entering in when we use the arrow keys for Kodu to move and move quickly. So when the arrow keys on the keyboard are pressed, I want Kodu to quickly move. Okay, so that's our first line of code. And if I hit escape and then hit escape again, I'm now running my script or running my program. And you can see that I'm now able to move around by using the keys on the keyboard. Now I can also um, add other functionality to keep to Kodu and part of that is um, I'm going to add some additional characters so I'm going to add an object um, and I'm going to add uh, an apple okay and I can come up here and I can change the color of the apple okay I'm going to leave it as red I like red apples um, and now I'm going to program Kodu so that when he sees a red apple to go and eat it. 
So I would come back here in my programming and I would say when Kodu, um, and we're going to go with uh, when you, he sees a red apple to here's an action to uh, let's see uh, let's go back I want to find eat or how about um, let's see if we can go back and make it eat it make him eat it to me Oh, there we are. Eat. So to eat it. All right. So when Kodu sees a red apple, he's going to eat it. Now let's hit escape and run the program. So when Kodu sees a red apple, he eats it. And that's what he did. Okay. Now let's add some different logic into it. Um, so let's say here that we're going to introduce another apple okay but this time we're going to make this apple green okay and we're going to say uh, that when Kodu okay so when Kodu sees a uh, green Apple, we want him to say, yuck. We'll save that. Okay, so now we hit escape and we run. He sees that red apple and he goes, oh, yuck. I don't want to. I don't want that, but when he goes to the red apple, he eats it. But if he goes to the green apple, he just says, yuck, I don't want that. No, no, no. Okay. Now, we can, one other quick thing here, we can also program other characters to do things in our simulation or in our game as well. So this time, I'm going to add uh, a fly fish. Okay, and I'm gonna have the fly frit, the fly fish move on its own. So what I'm gonna do is come over here and create a path for the fish to move on. Okay. So we're gonna have the fish move around here with the apples. Okay. And we're gonna go come over. Oops. Okay, so we're also going to come over here and uh, we're going to come over here and I'm trying to get rid of that little I'm going to have to move my fish that's what I'm going to have to do move my fish out of the way come over here and delete that guy Okay, so now what we're going to do is program the fish to move along the path. So we're going to come over here to the fish program and we're going to say do move on path and move quickly. So now the fish moves along the path we created so we've actually programmed uh, the fish to do so and what I'm trying to get at with uh, this programming language and its correlation with uh, English and language arts is that students could actually write a story based on the characters and the functionality here in Kodu and then actually code what they write so that they actually get a chance to um, not only write about something, but actually make it come to life. Thank you.